Another decade of college hoops comes to a close tonight in Hinkle Fieldhouse as the Butler Bulldogs take on the St. John's Red Storm to conclude the opening weekend of Big East play. Welcome courtside, everybody. I'm Matt Schumacher. She is Amber Stocks. Happy New Year to you. Glad to be with you from the Cathedral of College Hoops. A really fun matchup. And on paper, Amber, some folks may be at home thinking St. John's should win this game, right? Pick to finish second in the league. So many weapons. But I know you're pretty high on Butler, and you expect this to be a close game. Oh, this is a great game to watch. St. John's picked preseason number two. Butler, preseason number seven. But don't get it twisted. Last season, Butler swept St. John's, winning all three matchups. I expect this game to go down to the wire, just like every game in the Big East, neck and neck. Absolutely. So much parity in this league. When you talk about St. John's, yes, they are balanced. But there is one woman who leads this attack so well. Her name is Kodasha Hoppy. For the second season in a row, she is the primary scorer for St. John's, averaging 16.3 points. She's also the go-to three-point shooter, shooting 40% behind the arc. And don't let it stop there. Kodasha Hoppy leads St. John's in free throw attempts as well. Her overall productivity is second to none. Also on the team's assists, steals, charges, productive all across the board. Now, there's a reason why she is the preseason All Big East nominee overall for her career. High points 24 against who else? Butler Bulldogs. Now, speaking of big games in Hinkle Fieldhouse, expect a big performance tonight from Kristen Spolier. She has big games in Hinkle Fieldhouse earlier this year, put up 37 points. She's averaged double-figure scoring in all four years, 18.8 points per game this season. Second on the team, including offensive rebounds, speaks to her overall productivity as well. She's a leader for Butler. Expect Spolier to play the top of the zone, push and transition, and inspire her teammates. There is no surprise why she is also a preseason All Big East nominee. And now, Amber, let's take a look at your keys to the, to the match tonight. Well, for St. John's, it's going to be very important that they have balanced scoring, not just relying on Hoppy, but at least four to six players for St. John's needs to score in double figures, including the bench. That could be Correa, Alston. All the players need to come off eager to score, and the match rebounding is going to be key. Butler is second in the Big East in rebounding margin. And for Butler? For Butler. Big key here is to minimize the turnovers. St. John averages 20 points per game on turnovers. Last game, Butler turned the ball over 20 times. Key number one, make three-point shots. In Butler's wins, they've made at least seven three-point shots. We are ready for tip in Hinkle Fieldhouse, the final game of the decade in the Cathedral of College Hoops. Butler in the gray, St. John's in the blue, and the dogs secure the tip. Our referees tonight, Karen Preto, Pulani Spurlock, and Ashley Gilpin. As these two sides conclude the opening weekend of conference play, and right away, Kristen Spolier gets a pair. That's what Spolier does so well. She finds ways to attack the defense and use the gaps right away, in going inside and getting an easy layup. And now here comes Genesis Parker. Parker going right to the rack. Off the mark and rebound, Alicia Kaby. Now Tiana England the other way. England, another Big East preseason nominee. Expect St. John's under her guidance to really push the tempo. Butler must get back on defense. Dogs coming off a disappointing result against Seton Hall on Sunday. They led by as many as 15. We're outscored 24 to eight in the fourth quarter and ultimately fell by five. Spolier. Oh, how about that? A little dipsy do from the senior. She knows how to score the basketball. She's a very crafty player. And knowing her teammates are looking for her to get them off to a quick start and provide that energy, Spoilers comes off the handoff, knows the defense went under the screen, cut that corner tight, and was able to pick up the end one. I think she even might have been the only one in the gym who knew that <laughs> one was going in. You know, one of the things that Kurt Godlewski said has really improved in her game is her ability to get to the foul line because so many opponents are keying on her as the primary scorer. 
She's finding ways to get points at the stripe this season. Matuso tabbed with her first foul. Inside to Nolan, doubled, and off her foot and back to the dogs. Okay, we can go on and on about Spolier, but interesting, she was the one who initiated that turnover by her aggressiveness digging down on the double team and the dig. St. John's, as you touched on in the open, picked second in the conference. They really feel like this is their best shot since they won the league title back in 2016. Torre on KB. Couldn't get the shot to drop, but nonetheless headed to the line for a pair. Consistently now, we see Butler having a strategic approach, which is attacking St. John's off of the dribble. They're trying to turn the corner and really get the ball inside. They clearly have it in their game plan to generate easy points at the free throw line. That has been one of the areas of weakness for St. John's at times this year, and their four losses, if you look at the numbers, They've been beaten in the paint, not only on the boards, but points in the paint as well. It's a guard-heavy group. But don't let their size fool you. They are scrappy, they are speedy, and they can put up a lot of points in a hurry. Well, you say speedy, and they, they play with a lot of great pace. Again, they have England and Alston bringing up the ball, and they provide a lot of that speed for St. John's. KB picks up the offensive board. Now Hoppy on the second chance and buries the triple. Hoppy does what she knows how to do, and that is spot up for threes. We saw during warm-ups, she made 11 out of 12 consecutive three-pointers. Has developed into somebody that Joe Tartamella can count on night in and night out. And so that's the biggest difference with Hoppy here in the 2019-2020 campaign, her consistency. Late in the shot clock for Butler. Parker with four. And Genesis splashes the pull-up J. Genesis Parker provides so much consistency. She's such an even-keeled player for Butler. She's got the leadership with her veteran experience. St. John's coming off a win over Xavier. They led by double figures for much of the afternoon in Cincinnati. Hoppy, step back. Why not? Now you don't see much mid-range step back lately, but that is a nice move from Hoppy. Hoppy with the hops, shall we say? I like that. Joe Tartamella said if there's one thing he really wanted to improve on in that game against Xavier, it's closing the quarters. And that goes off the foot of Kristen Spolier and out of play back to the Johnnies. Now, as crafty as Spolier is, I'm a little surprised she didn't try to kind of get the maybe Chris Paul and one on that <laughs> and go up with the shot and try to draw the contact, see if she can sneak a couple free throws out of that. But she's got plenty of time left in the game. Hoppy open for three. That time off the mark and a rebound into the hands of Genesis Parker. Butler swept the season series against St. John's last year. Rebounding was a key factor in both of those wins for Butler. England corrals, and Hoppy scoops it up in the midcourt. Butler choosing to stay man-to-man -man here, but during the course of the game, they're gonna mix it up and play some 2-3 zone. Late in the clock, tipped out of bounds. It'll stay with St. John's, but they'll have to do it quickly with two seconds on the timer. There is Joe Tardamella, who is really excited about the depth of his team this year. They were so depleted at times last season, Amber, that they would only practice once or twice a week by the end of conference play. That's not the case with a really deep roster in Queens this season? Well, the influx of freshmen and freshmen who are being productive for St. John's is making a big difference in that depth. 
And likewise with the transfers. We haven't seen her yet, but Raven Farley will come in at some point, making her third appearance of the season. The LSU transfer was huge against Xavier. Hoppy with five. Now KB doubled. Skip pass to England. And beautiful defense by the Butler Bulldogs, a shot clock violation. Well, Butler was fortunate to squeak out of that possession with a stop. Earlier in the possession, as we saw, they had the shot clock down to two seconds. Kick ball, an unfortunate rule that really hurts the defense, which allowed the shot clock to reset and put more time on for St. John. So kudos for Butler to come out with the stop. They are one of the best defensive teams in the league. Butler allowing less than 60 points per game. Big rebound from Cat Strong. Bry corrals out to Spolier for three. You like the effort by both Cat Strong and Shea Bry to attack the offensive boards for Butler. And now Alyssa Austin running the point for St. John's. Another one of the transfers came over from Ole Miss. Nolan heaves and hits from the top of the arc. Great ball movement by St. John's, all initiated by Austin getting deep in the paint, drawing the defense in, and kicking it out for the three. Nida Caceres driving. And the floater rattles down. Caceres never afraid of contact. As we can see, she already took a hit to her eye two days ago versus Seton Hall, but she's not shy about getting in the paint. Battle tested. KB from the corner off the mark and into the hands of Kat Strong, who's starting to play a bit more confidently on that knee, which she tore towards the back end of the conference season a year ago. Looking for Bry, tipped off the hands of St. John's. It'll stay with Butler when we come back. A rapid pace to start in Hinkle Fieldhouse. Early lead for Butler. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, metropolitan, and global university. We are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Back inside Hinkle Fieldhouse, an early 9-8 lead for the Butler Bulldogs. And Amber Stocks, they have executed the game plan well so far. What Butler needs to make sure that they do is key in on Hoppy. St. John's is having Hoppy set screens. And as we all know, the best way to get open is to set a screen for somebody else and get your teammates open. Communication is vital between Spolier, who has the Hoppy assignment, and Cat Strong, whose players coming off a lot of those screens by Hoppy. And head coach Kurt Godleski in his sixth season said that that breakdown in communication that you were just talking about is the reason that they folded in the fourth quarter against Seton Hall just a couple of days ago. He said 
it got to a point where we were afraid to win and we stopped doing the little things. Meanwhile, for St. John's, they started off a little bit hairy, turning the ball over a couple of times, but since then, they've been very fluid offensively. It's nice to see them playing with such confidence on the road, two games in a row. We know that road trips can kind of get a little brutal toward the end, but St. John's has energy, and, and that energy is going to prove vital down the stretch. Copy with five of the team's eight points so far and a travel on Nida Caceres. Back to the Johnnies. Again, nice strategy by Butler. It didn't generate any points, but trying to go inside and attack in the paint. Our first look this afternoon at Raven Farley, the LSU transfer wearing number four in blue. And they dump it right down to her. Fumbled the handle. And back out to Austin. Five to shoot. Correa, baseline, swatted out of play by Torre. And our officiating staff has called it a shot clock violation. Okay, what was so impressive about that defensive stop by Torre? She was down in help side to help on the inside post and then still managed to close out and get the block. That's just great hustle inside and out all across the court by Butler defense. And now an offensive foul. Against Dupe Atuso, and now she has two quick fouls to start the first quarter. At least for the moment though, Kirk Godlevsky will leave her on the floor. Well, Atuso is going to provide some great defense, especially the on-ball pressure on England and Austin. We talk about all the new faces for St. John's. Butler has plenty of new faces in their own right, and Atuso is one of those. The JUCO transfer, first team All-American a season ago. England off the screen. Farley, extra pass. Correa with one, heaves, and it's blocked again by Torre. The second time that she has altered a shot and forced a shot clock violation. Well, third shot clock by violation by St. John's, second consecutive block by Torre. Her length and athleticism. This is what Butler needs to continue to have on their attack. And now Correa wants to push and transition. That is St. John's MO. They want to get up and down the floor. Haven't had the opportunity to so far tonight, but it hasn't mattered because Hoppy is hot. Spolier, one word, run her off the line, or one key thing for her to focus on, get Hoppy off of the three-point line. Matuso runs the point for the Dogs, less than two minutes to go in quarter number one. Inside to Spolier, throws it off the front end of the rim and into the hands of Raven Farley. Butler's getting stops on defense. They've got to find a way to make sure they're converting and capitalizing on that on the offensive end. They're looking to go high-low. They see the last possession. Cat Strong's defender kind of really sagged all the way off to cover the interior. They've got to find ways to adjust because they're getting the stops on defense. No points for Butler in the last two and a half minutes and counting. St. John's with their first lead of the afternoon. And Farley called for a foul. Fouls on St. John's, number four, Raven Farley, her first, team's third. Those wing entry lob passes, that's when coaches tend to hold their breath. You like to lob it in from the high post and then from the tunnel, not necessarily from the wing. But with the way that Butler is clearing out the backside. It's giving good opportunities for Torre and Carrera to get the ball inside. Umu Torre, the freshman who has been so impactful so far this season, averaging just under nine points per game. One minute left in the first quarter, and a hand check on Torre. 
Those types of calls are so unfortunate and can really come back to bite a team in the end. Fortunately, there's only one minute left in the quarter. Bullard's not putting St. John's on the line. They've got a couple fouls to give. Correa, baseline, was looking for Bailey. Active hands in the lane by this Butler defense. And now the two Sue. I thought she might have gotten fouled on that play, but the refs let them continue. Bry swings it to Torre, and she's whistled for the walk. Again, another missed opportunity for Butler to capitalize on a stop. And you know, as a player, Matt, it's a little frustrating at times when the hand check call gets called that far away from the basket, but yet the block and transition does not get called. It's a little confusing for a player. What type of contact are the officials going to allow versus what type of contact do they need to play through? About a two second differential between game and shot clock for St. John's. Great movement on the perimeter. Hoppy pulls up and hits. Good shot by Hoppy. She saw that Caceres on defense reached while she was in the gap and her feet were set ready to fire. Final seconds for Butler. Torre heaves and it's off the mark. A four point lead for St. John's after the first quarter. Look no further than Quidasha Hoppy, 11 points on an uber-efficient four for five. Vision Works, a better view of the game. Thanks to Vision Works, we've given them a better view of the game from the south baseline in section 101. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com. 14-10 lead as we get set for the second quarter here in Indianapolis. Quadasha Hoppy already in double figures after 10 minutes. Well, the key right now is to find her quickly at the three-point line. Hoppy is setting screens for her teammates. She's moving without the ball and getting herself open. Her feet are always set and she's ready to shoot three for four from the three-point line and then four for five overall, 11 points for Hoppy. And the majority of her shots came on the left wing as well and Kirk Godlewski said one of the keys for his defense today was to push St. John's to the edges of the floor and not give them space right in around the wings but Kodasha Hoppy has just found enough space to make an impact. You know, I think one of the keys for Butler also defensively is it's not just Hoppy, but they've got to put more pressure on the passers. As a shooter, you want to catch the pass in your shooting pocket. So if they can, Butler, of course, can make the passer a little bit more uncomfortable, throw off some of these straight line passes to Hoppy, that might allow her to shoot a little less than 75% from the three-point line. <laughs> Her career high came against this Butler team the last time they played at the end of last season. 
24 in that contest. KB driving Butler off the mark and out of bounds back to the dogs. Conversely, Butler went the final four minutes of the first quarter without a field goal. What can they do to rectify that here in the second quarter? Well, I tell you, St. John's is not going to make that easy as they now add the full court pressure. Turnovers have been an Achilles heel for Butler, and handling the pressure is going to be vital. Butler averaging just over 18 turnovers a game. That leads the Big East. Torre. Bry. A two so short and into the hands of England. Pops and drops. Again, we talk about the pace that St. John's plays with, with Alston and England always looking to push tempo. Dogs are one for their last eight from the floor. Genesis Parker with 10. Five to shoot. Spolier knocked away by Hoppy. And it stays with Butler, although Joe Tartamello wanted a shot clock violation. That was good movement by Spolier but prior to her move to the basket. She was looking for Bry on the roll, but right now Bry, I don't know if it's fatigue or focus, but she's not very active on the court and Butler needs every ounce of energy from all five players. It's interesting because Bry is coming off a season high or a second season high rather 10 points and they needed that one from Umu Torre. That's the energy and the focus that Coach Godlewski is expecting of all of the Bulldogs right now. What Torre is bringing on offense and defense. Hoppy with a hand in her face, no problem. It might be time to switch that matchup because <laughs> Spalier has got no answer for anything that Hoppy has in her bag of tricks. It's the two leading scorers matching up with one another, and now Shea Bry knocks one down from the top of the yard. Okay, well, she needed to regroup her focus, and that she did, knocking down the three. And an unforced error travel on St. John's. It sends it back to the dogs. Five turnovers for St. John's, four for Butler. And now Kadeja Bailey comes in for Unique Drake. It's going to be important that when you talk about turnovers, Matt, that Butler have dead ball turnovers and get back in transition quickly because St. John's knows how to convert. England pulls it back out and just in time for Kadeja Bailey trailing up the floor. Points off of turnovers is a highlight. St. John's had 20 points off of turnovers versus Xavier two days ago. Spolier going right at Hoppy, off the mark. Butler here talking, trying to get organized defensively. They're now in that zone we mentioned where they're going to try to pack the paint and have high hands and force St. John's to play east and west instead of north and south. England tries to feed it inside. KB can't beat the shot clock. And that's at least the fourth shot clock violation of the afternoon for St. John's. St. John's looked a little out of sorts offensively and weren't quite sure to go with the call from the sideline or the call on the court as far as what play to execute. Matt, it's funny as we watch at this point in the game and the sideline calls coming from both coaches, this is more played like a fourth quarter right now <laughs> than it is a second quarter. You would expect the pace to be up and down, but every possession is crucial, and both coaches recognize that. Big block from Tiana England. Slows it down for KB on the wing. Nolan battling for the board, and she draws a foul on the floor. And it goes against Shea Bry. 
Shea Bryant with a box out, trying to make sure she, she secured the defensive rebound. But if she would have just jumped a little bit earlier, she might have been able to secure the rebound or at least make sure she didn't come up with a foul. And now Leilani Correa comes in for Alicia Kaby, who's been dealing with a shoulder injury all year. She's averaging her fewest minutes per game in her career. Correa off the mark and into the hands of Kat Strong. Sexton into Spolier, who is met by a foul on Emma Nolan. It's nice to see Sexton looking to execute the play, but she's got to notice that St. John's had that perfectly scouted. Help side was waiting for Spolier to come across that screen. Strong tried to save it, could not. Here comes Bailey. Kadeja Bailey through contact and a chance at the three-piece. No numbers, but Bailey was not deterred. She had key focus on eyes on the rim, drawing the contact and getting to the free throw line, shooting 33, excuse me, 58% from the free throw line this season. And the sophomore completes the three point play the hard way. Butler with his largest deficit of the afternoon, they trail by seven. Butler basketball. We see Spalier here courtside motioning to her teammates to stay calm and slow it down a little bit. Spalier cutting and with the left hand rattles it out. She has six. Correa still scoreless. Now 0 for 4 from the floor. And Prime opportunity for Butler to execute offensively. They were able to get free throws at the early in the game. Can they find ways to get other opportunities to generate points from the stripe. Certainly has been an emphasis to feed Spolier coming off screen so far in this second quarter. And now she's whistled for an offensive foul. And that is Spolier's first of the contest. St. John's has been red hot shooting 45% from the floor right in line with their league leading field goal percentage. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, Metropolitan, and Global University. We are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. 
St. John's with a five-point lead halfway through the second quarter, and Amber Stocks, one of the big points of concern for Kirk Godlevsky was points off of turnovers. St. John's so good in that area, they have eight points off turnovers so far this afternoon. Well, Butler not handling the pressure, whether it be full court, extended, or half court pressure, and the scouting by St. John's very well. So far this game, Butler with seven turnovers, and kudos to St. John's for capitalizing on that and converting. Now, what you like to see as a coach is this. Transition defense is at a premium when you play St. John's. If Butler is going to continue to only send two players to the offensive boards and have three players lingering on the perimeter, they've got to get back early, not just on a shot, but when it looks like it could be, maybe would be, possibly a turnover. <laughs> get back and shut down the St. John's transition game. Seven points in transition for St. John's. That woman right there, Kodasha Hoppy, with 14 points. And she shot the lights out of the ball. Five of six from the floor. Butler continuing to go with the zone defense. No key focus on Hoppy at the moment. No box and one. Nobody in her face. A rare miss for Hoppy, but a second chance opportunity taken advantage of by Kadeja Bailey. And that's what St. John needs is balanced scoring throughout, top to bottom. Don't just rely on Hoppy, but everyone has a job to do and able to put points on the board for St. John's. Sexton. And it goes back to the Johnnies. You touched on something a moment ago, Amber, about roles. And it's a big part of why St. John's has been so successful early on this year. They are not only balanced, but they're a team that has everyone buying into their individual roles. You know, Hoppy gets a lot of attention for what she does at the three-point line, but Leilani Carrera, 33 points earlier this season for St. John's in Alston. She had 18, and then two days ago against Xavier, came in and provided 12 quick baskets. That is what a team needs, everyone to play their role, offensively and defensively. Look at that pass inside from England, off the mark and into the hands of Fly. And now she wants to push. Nina Caceres on the baseline, defended by Farley. Out of play it goes, but it'll stay with Butler. So at first glance, it seems as if Farley did come down on Strong, but it's important to note that Strong initiated that contact into the defense, forcing her arms to come down just a little bit. So that's why Farley did not get called for the foul. Spolier doubled out to Caceres. Knocks down the three. Caceres giving a little sigh of relief when that shot goes down. That's good for her and Butler. They've got to generate points from the three-point line. As we mentioned, in their wins, they consistently made over seven three-point shots. Today, just three for 10. Meanwhile, St. John's shooting 42% from downtown. A little confusion there by Butler on defense. You talked about communication, Matt. It's showing, it's rearing its ugly head again. <laughs> the lack of communication by the Butler defense. Fortunately, St. John's had the turnover. Under three to go in the first half. And Dia fly driving. India and through contact, got it off the window. And it's back to a two point lead for St. John's. Hoppy driving and dishing beautifully into Raven Farley. Nice pass by Hoppy attacking the zone off the dribble, drawing not one, not two, but three defenders on her. Beautiful pass and finish by Farley. Fly. Too heavy, dives for it. Correa scoops it away for St. John's. And here comes England. 
Hoppy tried the shuffle. Back out to Correa for three. Bang! Well, right on cue, St. John's moving the basketball and dishing it out to teammates, playing with confidence and aggressiveness. I like Correa. Six for 13 as a team from downtown this afternoon. Spolier rolls it around past Farley. That's no easy task. Farley stands at six foot four. Hoppy. KB was walled off and now St. John's reverses back up top for England. Goes right at the heart of the defense and draws a foul. You know, just at the moment where you're wondering where England is going and what did she have up her sleeve, she's attacking the rim relentlessly. I like the verticality and the athleticism that England is showing being able to get up that high. And England, a junior, playing with great leadership. Again, we mentioned the freshman for St. John's with Correa on the court with her at the moment. Joe Tardamella calls Tiana England freakishly athletic. Not only is she fast and skilled, but she possesses this ability to do whatever she wants to do with the ball in her hands. And you can't teach that. You can't and you need her to play that aggressive. She shoots 86% from the free throw line. Unfortunately, only converted one of those free throws, but 86% get to the line as much as possible. And a miscommunication there. Spolier faked the backdoor cut. Strong threw it out of bounds, and it goes back to St. John's with just under 60 ticks left in the first half. Matt, rule number 92 in basketball fundamentals, you don't fake a backdoor cut. I won't ask you to go through the first 91. Because I could if you'd like. <laughs> As a former coach, I got to ask, did you put out a rule book, top 100 rules top of basketball? Top 100 rules. Don't fake a backdoor cut. I should have moved it up higher than number 92, but there's so many of them. If I was on your team, I would have dreaded a quiz <laughs> on that rule book. As astute as you are, you would have passed with flying <laughs> colors. Bry battling for position. Farley does well to knock her out of it. Parker with 10 to shoot. An unconventional miss by Genesis Parker. We talk about her reliability. How about that feed to Correa? Too strong. Spolier coughs it up into the hands of Torre. Shot clock turned off, and Torre has nothing but the cup in front of her. Spolier on the second chance. How about a third try? And finally, Butler scores. An interesting finish and close to the half. Hoppy off the window, and the bank is open on New Year's Eve. Wow. Hoppy feeling it out of chaos, out of confusion. Butler finds a way to sneak out two, but St. John's finds a way to sneak out three. Quadasha Hoppy with a game high 17 in the first half. And partner, this has been the type of day it's been for Quadasha Hoppy. Butler thinking, okay, maybe this is a prayer. No, sir, not today. Hoppy with 17. St. John's leads 35-27.
together, great voices right at the start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together. This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, metropolitan, and global university. We are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John's story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? And we gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help. Because what we are, we are one. Let's break it. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Uh. At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, metropolitan, and global university, we are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John's story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Welcome back to Hinkle Fieldhouse, a 34-27 lead for the St. John's Red Storm. At the halftime break, Matt Schumacher, Amber Stocks with you as we take a look at our first half stats brought to you by SoFi. One thing that jumps right off the page is three-point shooting. St. John's shooting nearly 50% from downtown. Well, St. John's being very productive and knowing what working well for them. And right now, it is hoppy. Four for six from behind the arc, and as a team overall, as we see, 
St. John shooting six for 13. Butler a little bit cold, but they have made three. If they can continue that pace, knock in a few more three-point shots, that should prove well. Also look down here at rebounds. Now, the rebounding margin looks like it's pretty even, but what's important to note is five of those Butler rebounds are offensive rebounds. That is an area where Butler can really capitalize and find ways to either generate more points or get more trips to the free throw line. We see Butler leading St. John's there in free throw attempts. One other thing that we'll really key in on, we talked about it early and you mentioned it multiple times, Matt, and that is points off of turnovers. St. John's 10 points off of forcing eight Butler turnovers. Butler likewise able to force St. John's into eight turnovers, but not converting those into baskets. And one final note on those points off turnovers, 10 nothing in transition points in favor of St. John's. It's a team that likes to get out on the break. They were able to do so because of those Butler turnovers in the first half. We'll be back with more at the halftime break from Indianapolis after this. Happy New Year, thanks for joining. We'll see you in just a few moments. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Uh. At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, Metropolitan, and Global University, we're at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. All right, we gotta be all in, all in, all right? We gotta make sure we play with great passion. You have felt each other and helped each other and allowed yourselves to be helped with that, all right? We've got a great opportunity to do that today. This is who we are. When you look to your left and you see your sister over there, you help her. Because what we are, we are one. Let's pray. One, two, three. Yeah. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Big East Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets now. Time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. We are all in, all together. Great voices ready to start, great energy. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room with people for victory. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get. We are back from Hinkle Fieldhouse, the final game of the opening weekend in Big East women's basketball. A lot of great shooting early on in this one, and look no further than Quadasha Hoppy partner, 17 points in the first half for St. John's. Well, it was very evident early in the game that Butler's strategy was to get it inside. 
Bollier got off to a quick start, and so did Hoppy from St. John's. There was no answer for what she was able to produce for St. John's. Now, St. John's was able to move the ball and get productivity also from Kadaja Bailey with seven points, and Correa draining in a three, helping out at the three-point line as well. Early in the game, Butler, 12 points in the paint, and that helped them get an early lead, but they could not sustain that throughout the duration of the game. Actually, 16 points for Hoppy in 19 minutes of play, six for eight from the floor. Butler will be looking for more points in the paint, but this is how we ended the first half. After Butler went down and scored, Hoppy says, not so fast. I've got a little something else up my sleeve. Bank open after hours. And Hoppy cashes in. 34-27 St. John's. We'll be back with the second half after this. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, Metropolitan, and Global University, we are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John's story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get tickets. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. Welcome back inside Hinkle Fieldhouse. Thanks for spending part of your New Year's Eve with us. St. John's on top 34-27. Off a 48% shooting performance in the first half. They shot slightly under that from downtown. Six for 13 for St. John's. And they have just been a well-oiled machine all year offensively. And you know, they come into the night with an eight and four record, which doesn't look all that great. But when you consider the teams that they play, they took Florida State down to the wire. A team that is in the top 15 in the country and expects to be a, a sweet 16 
opponent. St. John's one of the toughest uh, non-conference schedules of any Big East team, and it has prepared them very well to come on the road in the first weekend and potentially come away 2-0. Scheduling is so vital. I mean, it's one of the, the keys to any successful program, scheduling and recruiting, and St. John's has proven that do both of them at a very high level. It's nice to see Butler being aggressive to start the half, coming out, applying more ball pressure than we saw them apply in the first half. Under 10 to shoot. Nolan out to Hoppy. Extra pass for England. And Torre corrals. The real question is, can Butler score in the half court? They were stagnant for long stretches in that first half. Two, three, and even four minutes at times without a field goal. Butler running a quick set here to try to get a look for Spolier, but well scouted and well defended by St. John's. Parker into Spolier, left hand, a kiss off the window. With the defense face guarding Spolier, the backdoor opportunities are going to be there. It's nice to see Butler look at it again and give it a second shot. Austin walled off inside to KB. Hoppy continues the hot shooting from downtown. Tough shot. Bry with the defensive assignment. You know, you can argue, Matt, that she was on Hoppy, but not on her enough. The step back has got to be contained. 19 points for Hoppy. Her season high is 23. Spolier. Trying to thread it inside to Torre, off the shoelaces, bodies on the deck, and a jump ball. It goes back to St. John's. You know, one thing that's worth noting out of that defensive stop by St. John's is their discipline defensively. Throughout the course of this game, there's not been very many fouls called. We mentioned not a lot of free throws, but overall not a lot of fouls called. Aggressive inside, yet disciplined by St. John's. And how about that move for Tiana England? She's got a chance at her second three-point play of the afternoon. England, one of the two preseason All Big East honorees, and that is why. So aggressive offensively, averaging about 8.4 points per game, but very big every time St. John's needs a basket. And as we mentioned before, 86% from the free throw line. She is the quarterback of the offense for St. John's. And Dia Fly picks up a double team at half court. Fly the transfer from Northwest Tech Community College. Hoppy defending Spolier in the corner. A two so off the mark. And here comes England pushing it ahead to Hoppy. Bry tees up a three. St. John's ball. St. John's on a 6-0 run over the last minute and a half. Their largest lead of the game, and Kodasha Hoppy a big reason why. Seven for ten from the floor. St. John's is finding ways to use her, and is Butler going to adjust? It seems not. Butler's going to stick with their defensive game plan, and you know what? St. John's will keep with theirs. Get the ball to Hoppy. How about that effort from Alyssa Alston? Following her own miss. Offensive foul called on Emma Nolan. That's her second. You know, that's a tough call. We talk about the aggressive play by England and Austin always wanting to attack the rim. Well, Nolan, she's in that same category. She likes to play aggressive, and she looks to pass the ball and distribute it well. She could have had a good look there for an assist. 
Cat Strong has come back in for Butler. Will we see Butler try to feed her in the post? Bry doubled. Spolier bails her out, flips it off the window and into the hands of KB, who draws a foul. Strong's second foul. As much as St. John's didn't like the call on one end, Butler not happy with the call on this end. But you gotta like the strength of the rebounding effort by St. John's trying to minimize this rebounding margin. Foul off the ball. Butler, 24, Spolier, her second team second foul on Spolier and now Butler just two fouls away from putting St. John's in the bonus, and we still have six minutes to go in the third quarter. For as few fouls were called in the first half, that clearly is something that to take note of how many are being called here in this start of the second half. Austin defended by Atuso. England matched up. Now with Fly, shake and bake off the mark. And a foul on the floor goes against Atuso. Three quick fouls on Butler. Well, you look at the lineup that St. John's has in right now, which is their go-to lineup with the perimeter players. Hoppy, England, and Austin is quick on quick on quick. <laughs> and that equals real, real quick. <laughs> this team is just lightning fast. Not only out on the break, but you can see it in the cuts that they're making, getting into the basket and getting open as well. KB draws another foul on Strong. That's the fifth foul of the quarter on Butler. Great look by Nolan. We mentioned earlier she averages 5.5 points per game. It has the court vision and ability to make those passes. Nice pass, high-low from Nolan into KB. KB, her first point of the night. Five boards, though, to her credit. And now St. John's will be in the bonus the rest of the way, and we haven't even hit the under five timeout. Well, that proved well. The senior KB shooting 89% from the free throw line. So you got to expect with St. John's now being in the bonus, She'll see a quick breather and then get right back on the court. St. John's with their largest lead of the afternoon at 13 on an 8-0 run in Hinkle Fieldhouse. Stand up, stand up stronger. I got the power, gonna raise it up. So high, we're shining brighter. We got the power, gonna raise it up. We're getting excited about what we do, all right? You know how together you are. You know how hard you're gonna work, but you also know how good you are. Let's go show them. One, two, three. Together! This is our time. When we bring it, we bring it together, and we all locked in, we coming back in this locker room people for big. That's the Big East way. The 2020 Women's Basketball Tournament at Wintrust Arena. Get to It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. Well, St. John's so balanced. Coming into the year, picked second in the Big East behind only DePaul. Weapons across the board. It was all hoppy in the first half. Tiana England got involved in the second half so far, partner. But either way, just a, a five-headed monster when St. John's is on offense. 
Well, St. John's is relentless with their ability to attack the rim. The entire first half, St. John's shot three free throws. So far, Matt, only four minutes and 35 seconds into the second half, and they've equaled that three free throw attempts and it looks like more to come with Butler five fouls and St. John's in the bonus for the duration. Butler on a three and a half minute scoring drought and that has been their Achilles heel so far this season. At times inability to score in the half court and with so many new faces and also the departure of your top three scorers from a year ago. It's taking some time for the dogs to adjust and build that chemistry. Well, St. John's doing what they do and applying the full court pressure and forcing yet another Butler turnover. Neither team able to convert coming out of the timeouts. Inside to Strong. Going to work on Nolan. Couldn't sneak it over, and it's back to the Johnnies. You know, you mentioned Kat Strong being back Time off of injury. Four. It's Ball nice to see her St. starting John's to get her grooves back just a little bit. That shot didn't fall, but you want her to keep being aggressive inside, scoring and rebounding for Butler. Hey, fans, it's time for today's Hoosier Lottery Lucky Row. We are in section one. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. We aren't just dreamers, we're doers. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time, none of you people yeah. can tell me to stop. Uh. At St. John's University, our students believe serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, Metropolitan, and Global University. We are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. St. John's with a 13-point lead over the Butler Bulldogs, who at one point had this at a two-point game at the end of the first half since a 17-6 run for the Johnnies. So, Amber Stocks. We know the Butler has struggled tonight against the quickness defensively for St. John's. What can they do to get back into this one here in the final five minutes of the third quarter? Well, it goes back to something that you mentioned and that Coach Godlewski probably has nightmares about, which is communication. Butler has got to communicate defensively. That will allow them to be more aggressive on the ball. And you think, well, if St. John's is so quick, shouldn't Butler back up? And that's the exact opposite of what you want to do. You don't want to give Alston, England, and Hoppy room to work and room to manipulate the defense. Talented players with good ball handling skills. The last thing you want them to do is to be uncomfortable and have momentum going downhill. England runs the point. Hoppy coming off a screen. Instead it goes to Alston. Alston right to the rack and draws a foul. We talk about that downhill momentum and you know that's what Alston is going to do. Nice draw out of the timeout, a set play, trying to attack. Again, Butler has five fouls. Every time St. John's is able to draw a foul, they are going to get two sh shots at the free throw line. You know, it wouldn't be surprised if St. John's doesn't even shoot a jumper the rest of this quarter and <laughs> continues to attack and take the free baskets. First point of the afternoon for Austin. 
14 point lead for St. John's. Still on a 9-0 run. Spolier off the bottom of the backboard and here comes Austin. Back out to England. Same set, same play. Great hustle by Kristen Spoyer and a foul drawn in the midcourt by India Fly. St. John's trying to execute their box set, two possessions in a row. Nice heads up by Spoyer to know the scout and not get beat on the same play twice. Good foul on the other hand too by St. John's because Spoyer had a clear shot at the basket. Instead, side out of bounds for the Dogs. Fly. Atuso pulls up, leaves it short. Bailey, coast to coast. Coach calling for an ISO clear out so England can take strong one on one, hope to draw another foul. Five to shoot. Hoppy with time expiring, rattles it home. How do you do? Well, I guess if you're Hoppy, attacking the rim is a high percentage shot, and just shooting a pull of three <laughs> is a high percentage shot. Certainly tonight it is. Six of eight from distance. And the run is now 12-0 in favor of St. John's. And a three-second violation on Shea Bry. You know, that's a tough call right there and a tough outcome for Bry. Strong has to do her a favor, and Kat Strong is capable of hitting that high post shot. We've seen her do it this, throughout this season. Pass fake inside, the defense is sagging off. Strong's got to be able to take that shot for Butler. England picked up by Fly. Butler could use a turnover and a conversion. Austin, walled off. England, kick out to Austin. Three point basket, England lost the shoe, runs over to pick it up, but still, with, even with one shoe, able to make the assist. She's got her shoe back on and got back in transition defense as well. That's impressive. They always do that shoe race at halftime around here at Hinkle Fieldhouse where the kids got to put on the big shoes or whatever. I think Tiana England could contend for a championship in that little halftime fun. No doubt about that. Farley. Tipped away by Spolier. Goes back to Butler with under two minutes to play in this third quarter. Here's another look at Tiana England making plays down a wheel. Substitution for the red score, Correa. She was in a stance ready to attack off the dribble. One shoe, no shoe. It's all good. Yeah, right. Still make the play. Unfazed. Butler has Sexton and Caceres back in. And a foul goes against, nope, timeout rather, awarded to Joe Tardamella. All of a sudden, it's a 20 point lead for St. John's on a 15 0 run. And that is what this team can do to you with their speed and their ability to score in transition. But tonight, Amber, they have shot a ridiculous 53% from distance. That's tough to beat, no matter how well you're playing offensively. It's really hard for any team to compete with 53%. And then you, on top of that, not only does St. John shoot the ball well, but they are very aggressive and swarming defensively, that's a double whammy. 
Big East Women's Basketball Tournament tickets are on sale now at BigEast.com backslash WBB tickets. That's March 6th through the 9th at Wintrust Arena, the final year of the contract in Chicago. So if you are watching this in the Midwest and you're within driving distance, don't miss out. Certainly the St. John's team hopes to be at Wintrust on the final day of the tournament. Picked to finish second this year behind DePaul, who are the reigning Big East tournament champs. Robinson draws a foul on her first play of the evening and goes to the line for a pair. Her first team's third. Head to the line for your Bulldogs to shoot two. Jamalyn Robinson. Team defense by St. John's not able to finish at the end as Drake picks up the foul. Again, we talked about the free throw shooting for Butler being something that they really can improve upon, only shooting 69% as a team. And with the youth right now on the court for Butler, you gotta think that's some easy way for these young players for Butler to get points on the board and start to inch away at this lead. Drake in the blink of an eye off the window. Watch the clock for a backcourt violation. And a 10 second violation 10 second back has occurred. Back Butler has completely switched up the lineup here. Sarah Humphrey is in, Ellen Ross is in, Amelia Sexton, and of course Jamalyn Robinson. And this is a group of players that don't get a lot of minutes in their own right, especially not all on the floor at the same time. 30 seconds to go in the third quarter. And a foul on Robinson. Well, St. John's coming right back at Butler with the youth as well. Farley at the line for St. John's, a junior. We talked about Hoppy being a junior. Correa, a sophomore. Excuse me, Correa, a freshman. So a lot of youth on the court right now for both teams. So Humphreys has charged, been charged with the assignment of taking the ball out of bounds against the pressure. She's handled it well, that possession, adjusted, was able to get the ball across half court. Humphrey left open. Up to Hoppy. Nice. Five seconds to shoot. Nice outlet, smart decision by Hoppy. Into Farley, rejected by Robinson, and that is how we end the third quarter. At the end of three, Butler 30, St. John's 53. 53-30, St. John's, they end the quarter on a 19-1 run over the final eight and a half minutes. All St. John's all the way as we head to the fourth. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans, saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. We aren't just dreamers, we're doers. My time, my time, none of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time, none of you yeah. people can tell me to stop. Uh. At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. 
A Catholic, Vincentian, Metropolitan, and Global University, we are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Butler looking for answers offensively, and so far tonight through three quarters, Amber Stocks, they just haven't found any for the speedy defense of St. John's. For Butler, only Kristen Spoyer and Caceres are the only players for Butler who have scored more than one field goal. And no matter how much Butler is moving the ball and distributing, they're not able to convert, even when they are getting stops. But that third quarter, there, there wasn't a stop in sight for the Butler defense. Well, I think that sight says it all. The starters on the bench for the most part for Butler. It's been a puzzling afternoon for the dogs. Meanwhile, on the other side for St. John's, all the credit to the Red Storm. Just a spectacular performance, not only offensively, but getting in the passing lanes, disrupting Butler, and what they want to do in the half court. It's why they're on top by 23, and currently on a 19 to one run. Against Seton Hall, Butler able to maintain the lead most of the game, and the game only got away from them late in the fourth quarter. Well, the first two quarters of this game, again, it was neck and neck and pretty close. Now the third quarter is where we saw that shift and a changing of the guard, and St. John's really able to pull away from St. John's as Drake goes in and scores another layup for the Red Storm. Robinson out to Sexton, tees up the triple. Nice shot by Kristen Sexton, excuse me, Amelia Sexton, 26% three-point shooter, but confident, had her feet set, able to knock it down. Desperately needed that field goal. Butler scored three points in the 10 minutes of the third quarter. We got a three early here to start the fourth, but a quick foul on Sarah Humphrey. I like how St. John's is rewarding Farley. Farley is affecting shots defensively down low. On offense, they're coming back. They're making an effort to get the ball inside and not just shoot jumpers, even though, as you mentioned, all the jumpers for St. John's are falling. Farley, a little contact, no call, and here come the dogs. Humphrey driving and draws a foul on Raven Farley. Good vision by Humphrey to see the opportunity to attack the high foot of Farley and to drive it down the lane and draw contact. Sarah Humphrey has not played a lot this year for Butler. She is four for eight now, four for nine from the stripe. Look, but Butler may not get it all back here in the fourth quarter, right? They're down 21, but certainly there are things to build on here for Butler. And if you're the staff and the players, there's reason to finish out this fourth quarter on a strong note. Absolutely. There's a lot that you can work on, not just on the court, but even for the starters who aren't in the game and on the bench as well. First and foremost, communication and energy. They've got to stay together, communicate, and provide energy for the players who are on the court. Secondly, play execution. The youth continue to find ways to execute offensively and execute defensive schemes. Meanwhile, Kadeja Bailey on the other end has had an excellent Second half, 
for St. John's. Smart decision by Drake there, fumbling the ball a little bit. Pick up the ball and secure possession for your team. Eight on the shot clock, St. John's finding a way to try to score here, looking a little bit confused on what they're trying to get offensively. And another shot clock violation. They had a lot of those in the first quarter. Luckily for them, a 19 to one run in the third quarter negated all of that as Butler Replaces the reserves with the starting lineup coming back in for the first time here in the fourth quarter. And in all fairness for St. John's, the youth was on the court. You know, Drake, a freshman with the primary ball handling point guard responsibility. Now St. John's bringing Hoppy and England back in the game for their experience. Parker matched up by England. Parker cradles and draws a foul at the rim. Genesis Parker is a phenomenal athlete and a very smart and poised basketball player. She's been quiet and her minutes have been very limited throughout the course of this game. And you talked earlier, Matt, about, well, the game's kind of gotten away from Butler, but what can they do during this last six minutes and 20 seconds? And that is what Genesis Parker did. Continue to play your game and make improvements individually. Attack the rim and play Butler basketball. She's really found a home here with Butler. Former four-star recruit, previously played at Virginia Tech and the University of Cincinnati. But uh, Kirk Godlewski really feels like her skill set matched what Butler needed when they went to the transfer market. And she's fit in very nicely, not just skill-wise, but with the culture that they want to continue to develop here at Hinkle Fieldhouse. You can't say enough about culture for any team, but especially with as much youth and as they're trying to continue to develop it and sustain it. Spolier forces. Couldn't get it to go, and now nothing but the cup for Bailey, who has 11 tonight. I like Bailey's game. She's so smart, and that's twice that she has, in just this quarter alone, looked for those leak-out opportunities and heads up by her teammates to know that she's going to run in transition. Bry battling, leaves it short. And that has been Butler's night in a nutshell. Even the shots that they have gotten around the rim, they just haven't seen any of them fall. England driving. England driving and losing her shoe again. <laughs> Starting to see a theme here. Hoppy ties a career high 24 points. Both performances of 24 points in her career have come against the dog. 63-34 St. John's. It's been all hoppy all night. We'll be back after this. It's time to fuel your ambitions by taking charge of your student debt. At SoFi, we've helped over 250,000 people refinance their student loans saving thousands of dollars. Now you can pay off your student loans faster and reach your goals sooner. See how much you can save in just two minutes at SoFi.com slash save. We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. My time, my time. None of you 
St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, Metropolitan, and Global University, we are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Welcome back to Hinkle Fieldhouse. Kodasha Hoppy getting a much deserved rest. 24 points on 9 of 12 from the floor. St. John's on top of the Butler Bulldogs with under 5 to go. 63 34, trying to close this one out here and uh, become the fourth Big East team to go 2 0 after the opening weekend. Creighton picked up a big win against Villanova earlier this afternoon. Seton Hall took care of business in Cincinnati. St. John's here against Butler. Should the results stay the same, we'll finish the opening weekend at 2-0. And then they'll head back home after the New Year's holiday. St. John's next two games against Georgetown and Villanova. And that Villanova game on CBS Sports Network one of a number of nationally televised games in the Big East Conference this year. And well, I'll tell you what, you could probably expect to see a lot more nationally televised games next year with UConn entering the fold. But you look at what this St. John's team has done, not only today, Amber, but their whole body of work this weekend, going 2-0, handling business in Cincinnati, and now again here in Indianapolis. What gives you the confidence in this team that they can really make a deep run this year? The thing that stands out the most about this St. John's team is the team chemistry. They play so well together, and you look at the bench, they're energized. Now it's easy to say, well, of course the bench is energized. They're winning the game. But throughout the course of the game, you can see that they've played together and stuck together. The youth from St. John's is really impressive as mm. well. You know, Hoppy being a junior, England being a junior, and of course, we got to mention their standout freshman, <laughs> Leilani Correa. This year, she's already put up 33 points as a freshman, and tonight she's only scored, you know, one basket, one for seven from the field, but she's a talented player who's going to really look to do some things. And I think it speaks to the strength of this roster when you've got your second leading scorer, Held the one for seven from the floor, and yet you're up almost 30 points on a, a very good defensive opponent in Butler who's not allowed 60 points much this season. Well, a lot of the reason why St. John's has that lead is from that young lady who got that rebound. Substitution. Bailey is so productive. She's doing all of the little things that St. John's needs offensively and defensively. Bailey's second on the team in offensive rebounds. She continues to attack. We've seen what she does offensively tonight. She's got 11 points, second leading score for St. John's on this game. But offensive rebounding, Matt, is a lot about effort. Joe Tartamella cycling in a number of subs. To close out the final three minutes here in Hinkle Fieldhouse. Austin scoops to Farley, but it could not beat the shot clock. And it goes back to Butler. Unfortunate shot clock violation for St. John's, but again, they're trying to get Farley some touches. Farley, the 6'4 junior, has come alive for St. John's. You know, she's averages five rebounds per game in her limited minutes, but she does a good job of altering shots and blocking shots defensively. It's nice to see them trying to work her into the fold, try to capitalize on her height and length further into Big East play. Parker runs the point for Butler. Caceres out to Sexton, who's their three-point threat, and right into the hands of Farley. This is a really deep Big East 
conference this season. You've got Creighton who's receiving votes, Marquette who's receiving votes. DePaul ranked 16th in the country. And then of course a very good St. John's team who probably felt like they could have come away with wins against UNLV, against Florida State, against James Madison who is 3-0 against Big East opponents this year. And I wouldn't be surprised if we see the Johnnies in the top 25 at some point throughout the conference slate. But you look at the top four in this league, Amber. Do you think St. John's could compete for a title this year? Oh, there's no doubt about it. St. John's has the ability, all of the little things, and again, both ends of the court is what it takes to win championships in the Big East. Well, they've held Butler to 39 points so far tonight. And they have absolutely done it on both ends. You, know, you look at St. John's numbers, and they are top two in the league in almost every offensive category. And that's what gets talked about the most because they're averaging nearly 80 points per game. But Joe Tartamella said when we buy in defensively for 40 minutes, we can compete with anybody in the country. You know, we talk a lot about the athleticism of St. John's. But you mentioned there, too, they have the buy-in. They are playing as a team. And they have the smarts. Farley there finally picking up a basket after her teammates keep feeding her the ball. She earns an offensive rebound and a putback. But I like to see St. John's not just relying on their athleticism, but they scout well and they apply their defensive execution. They know exactly what they're trying to take away from the opponent, and they've done it two games in a row now in Big East play. And as you keep going into Big East play, that scouting becomes vital. Final minute of the contest here in Indianapolis. St. John's is going to walk away with an undefeated opening weekend. Handling business and doing what they expected. Picked preseason number two in the conference. Coming off a disappointing season last year. And for Butler, it's sort of back to the drawing board. Tonight is one story, but they feel like they should have won that game the other night against Seton Hall. And credit to the Pirates, who have now come away 2-0 on the weekend. After coming back from down 15 against Butler on Sunday afternoon. Sexton the pull up. Got it. Five points for Amelia Sexton tonight. Five second differential between game clock and shot clock. So St. John's is not going to be able to burn the time. They're going to need to execute and get one final look here. See if they can distribute the point scoring. Rattles out for Drake. Final ticks here in Hinkle Fieldhouse. Caceres draws a pair. For Butler, you look at their upcoming schedule, and it doesn't get any easier because next weekend they take on Xavier and Villanova on the road. And you look at Xavier's schedule. 1 and 12 to start the season but there's a sense of a turning of the tides in Cincinnati this year under new coaching staff some new players who have been brought in there's a real buy in there in Cincinnati and no longer is that a game where you can walk in and say we should come away with this no problem they are testing teams this year St. John's was up to the test on the road for the second straight game and a second straight win, improving to nine and four on the year and two and zero oh in league play. We'll talk with Quidasha Hoppy, the game's high score with 24 when we come back.
We aren't just dreamers. We're doers. My time, my time. None of you people can tell me to stop. Good things happen when you unleash a Butler Bulldog. At St. John's University, our students believe, serve, explore, and achieve. A Catholic, Vincentian, Metropolitan, and Global University, we are at the heart of where lives are enriched. We provide a transformative education that goes far beyond the classroom. We aspire to do more. And for nearly 150 years, the St. John story has been the story of New York City. We are New York's team. We are St. John's. Welcome back inside Hinkle Fieldhouse. St. John's Red Storm take down the Bulldogs 67-42. An undefeated weekend to start conference play for the Red Storm. And we are joined courtside by Quidasha Hoppy, who had a game high 24, tying a career high. It's been a pretty good weekend for you. 18 at Xavier a couple days ago, and you followed up with 24 here today, what's working for you so well early in the conference season? You know, my coach and my teammates have just put a lot of confidence in me, and I come out and I'm just playing my game. 24 points, but equally impressive, no turnovers. How do you handle both ends of the court and then the shooting responsibilities as well as the ball handling responsibilities? Um, it's a big thing that my coach talks to me about, uh, being an upperclassman now, take care of the ball. We can't, you know, let possessions go. Every possession matters. So I just try to, you know, be 100% and, you know, take care of the ball like he says. You know, Quidasha, one thing that everybody talks about is the offense of St. John's because you're averaging nearly 80 points per game, one of the best scoring offenses not only in the league but in the country. But today I think you guys really showed what you're capable of defensively. What's the buy-in like for this group on the defensive side? Team defense, you know, we don't have as much, you know, height as other teams, but, you know, we make it up with our team defense, talking a lot and, you know, extra help. And when everybody buys into the defense, it's a good game. Any New Year's Eve plans for you besides hopping on the on the plane? Yeah, I'm landing at like 11 something. I'm just going to see my family, and that's it. Good. Get a good night rest before you head back to the next, uh, next round of Big East play. St. John's comes away with a big win. In Indianapolis, 2-0 and on the weekend. Kodasha Hoppy ends the night with 24 points. For Amber Stocks, I'm Matt Schumacher saying so long from Indianapolis. Happy New Year, and thanks for joining us. A big win for the Johnnies.